Hey everyone, welcome back to another Holland Good review. Today we're taking a look at their newest offering, their Edmontonia. Holland Good has been on quite a roll lately. They've been cranking out a ton of species over the last few months. Uh, they're basically the new PNSO with the high rate of figures they've been cranking out. Yeah, PNSO has slowed down uh, the last year or so, but a couple years ago they were just like out of control with releases. But thankfully, Holland Good prices are just so good. The figures are so hard to pass up. That's why I'm pretty much always getting bolt versions uh, when I pick up these figures. And I end up ordering mine from AliExpress. Uh, they retail between like $17 and $20, depending if you get them in the box or out of the box. But I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to order one for yourself. So Edmund Tony has been a species a lot of people have been wanting. A nice update for, you know, the you know, quintessential uh edmontonian our collection has been the long long retired uh batat one i think uh collect day has one uh out there but it's really not that good so it's really nice to see uh this species get a modern update so let's go over the package really quick before we take a closer look at these two figures both of them come in the same exact packaging we do have a picture of the red and the gray one on the front 135 scale on the top of the box we have a picture of the other figures Available from Holland Good, Pentaceratops and Pseudo, Coherosaurus, Aranosaurus, uh, Tien Xenosaurus, Hacky Rhino, and the Quetzalcoatlus, which I always forget uh, that they did, probably because I have mine uh, boxed away. So that will do it for the packaging. Let's throw these two figures up on the turntable and take a closer look. And here are both figures out of the packaging. I have to say, absolutely loved how these two turned out. Uh, and Tony has been a particularly favorite armored dinosaur of mine for a very long time, probably because I grew up uh, with dino riders, and both these figures are just absolutely spectacular, just like most of the Holland, all the Hollywood figures. Uh, they're just straight up repaints of the same mold, but like I said, their prices are so affordable. It's so easy to get both of them. Like if this came out from PNS, so they're probably around $40 for uh, just one of these but yeah the details on these are absolutely fantastic now one thing i want to point out about the red version right here um i guess when the original figures were shown off it was supposed to come more in a brown tone but they changed it to red for some reason so yeah that's going on i really don't mind the red you know it kind of gives me a nice barilla pelta feel to it uh both versions are great this is one of those times where it, i don't really mind which version i uh, would have if i only could pick one could bolt are just absolutely outstanding just the detail on the armor on these and just the head details all around these figures are just absolutely beautiful looking and now for some measurements this figure is six and three quarter inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail or 17.1 centimeters and about one and three quarter inches tall to the top of the hips of 4.4 centimeters so Edmontonia real life is around 22 feet long or 6.6 .6 meters. So I put this figure in the 140 scale range. I know in the box it says 135 scale. Uh, Holland Good, as much as I love their figures, they're kind of a little bit all over the place uh, with the scale with the figures. They always seem to range around that, you know, that 129-ish up to 140 scale and everywhere in between. I Some people mind that. I really don't. As long as the figure is somewhere in that 130 to 140 scale range, I'm happy with it being in my collection. And now let's first take a look at the red version. Up close, you can see all the fantastic details and paint job going on with this figure. First up, we do have a very nicely painted blue eye with a black pupil. Absolutely love blue eyes uh, on my dinosaur figures. I always find that to be a very, very striking feature. You can clearly see the mouth sculpted in right here with the nostril. Much more defined mouth uh, than the Huerasaurus. I know that was like really, really soft details on that one. Here's a view from the front. You can see all those osteoderms and armor plating on the head lots and lots of nice detail on the head so there are two species of um, edmontonia there's edmontonia longiceps and edmontonia rugosidens i believe this is based off rugosidens by the way the armor is laid out because uh the american museum of natural history does have a really really nicely preserved front half of it uh edmontonia rugosidens so judging by that it looks like this is the species uh, that it's based off of. And then going back to that armor, just look at the detail, all the nice weathering and dry brushing that they did on all the armor plating on the back. Very, very nicely done. Even the spikes along the sides, just beautifully, beautifully painted. They have this nice red coloration with a nice wash over there to bring out all that detail. Look at all the uh, small scales in between all those osteoderms. This beautifully sculpted figure all the way around from top to bottom front legs are nicely sculpted nice and muscular big big wide belly uh, you can see the toe claws 
are painted in with a light gray color, same thing for the front and back toes, and then going down to the hind legs, nice muscular hind legs, nice folds and wrinkles. I can say Holland God's uh, sculpting and painting and detail is just absolutely fantastic. I, I say in every single review that just the details and the quality of the figure for the price you pay is just absolutely outstanding. Best deal on the dinosaur collector market currently. And for our dinosaur butthole check, we have a cute little low wake of slit right there, and then going down to the tip of the tail, you can see just a hint of orange at the very tip. And all those spikes and ostrich turns just nicely, nicely painted. You even have some speckling uh, along the side. So yeah, all around an absolute beautiful, beautiful figure. I am quite happy how these turned out. And now let's take a look at the gray version. It's almost like a grayish blue coloration. Very, very natural looking. Same thing, head sculpt is really nicely done. Same thing, blue eyes, black pupil. All that armor plating is just nicely sculpted. You have a little bit of a red hue. Uh, mixed throughout the armor to kind of break up all that gray uh, and blue. So that's a nice touch. It doesn't look like, you know, it's like a simply painted figure. There's just lots of layers of paint uh, on the same thing with the spikes. Just lots of nice detail on the spikes. It looks like, you know, they did a nice job painting and give it that keratin sheath look on all those osteoderms. The front legs are nicely painted. You have a little black, uh, brown spot speckling on the legs and the flanks and the thighs on this figure. Here's the underside. We have a nice, pinkish hue for the belly region uh nice cloaca slit and going back to the back just take a look at all that beautifully beautifully sculpted armor you know all the way down to the tip of the tail still has the same little bit of orange on the tip of the tail like the red version has but yeah they absolutely knocked these figures out of the park just absolutely love them been wanting a nice updated edmontoni for my collection and how god did deliver in spades just absolutely beautiful work by them Moving on with comparisons, first up here is Collecti's 140 scale human figure. So the scales nicely with the Edmontonias. It gives you a good idea how big this animal was in real life. And next up, let's do a couple armored dinosaur comparisons. First up, here it is with PNSO's Ankylosaurus. And next up, here it is with Safari's Limited Sauropelta. And what else we got? They're all sitting in my lap. Uh, next up is PNSO's Borilla Pelta. And lastly, here is Holland Good's other armored dinosaur that they recently released, their Teen Zinosaurus. And next up, here it is with the Batat Edmontoni, which has been my you know go-to Edmontonia figure on my shelf. There's not a lot of Edmontonia figures out there, but yeah, it's bittersweet that I am retiring. This one off my shelf and replace it with uh, Holland Goods. You know, this one has had a very, very long run. The Patat figures are highly loved by the Dinosaur Collector community. It's just a shame that all those unreleased prototypes that we saw years and years ago, Terra never uh, released them, which is a damn shame because there's some really cool figures that I would love to see. And let's do some Dinosaur Park formation uh, comparisons. That's the formation that Edmontonia is from. It's actually from the uh, lower formation, well, you know, Edmontonia Rugosidens. So first up, we have PNSO's Parasaurolophus. And next up, I'm going to have to, where is she? That big floppy bitch that does not like to stand. Uh, here it is with PNSO's Corythosaurus. And next up, we have another Patat figure. We have their... Yoplocephalus, and next up we have Safari's Gryposaurus, and next up we have PNSO's Spinops, and next, well, else I got kicking around in my lap. This one is actually not from the lower formation, but I don't have a Gorbosaurus. Here it is with PNSO's Despletosaurus. And lastly, here it is with a group shot of most of the figures Holland God has released over the last few months. We have their amazing Apatosaurus in the back. It's my absolute favorite figure that they've released so far and maybe my favorite figure of the year, but we see what that comes to at the end of the year. We've got their Pentaceratops, Wearosaurus, Masuoceratops, Aranosaurus, and Pachyrhinosaurus. As you can see, you know, Holland Good has been pretty much, you know, herbivore heavy uh, lately. And I am fine with that because PNSO on the flip side has been very, very, Theropod uh, happy, uh, but they are actually releasing a Theropod. Finally, they're doing an Allosaurus. The pictures you know, are already all over the place online. Uh, I'm probably only going to pick up one of those. I like how it looks, but it does not look as good as their herbivores uh, for some reason. Yeah, they went with the lipless look, but they're, they're actually very, very communicative on the Dinosaur Toy Forum. 
Uh, they said, you know, the reason they didn't go with the lip version was just the head was just too small. It was too hard to get the tooling done on the mold to make it look lipless. At least, you know, they have a pretty good contact with us collectors and they seem very, you know, accepting of our feedback and they have a Dilophosaurus in the works. And I think they might even have an Alamosaurus or Brachiosaurus. There's a lot of rumors of what the next big sauropod from them is going to be. But yeah, they are definitely a company to be paying attention to. Just the quality and price of their figures. Really, no one can compare to them right now. So final thoughts on Holland Goods, Edmontonia. I think they're both absolutely fantastic figures. It's one of the rare times. Uh, I cannot pick between which color scheme I would want more. I like both of them equally, so I think you should be happy with either one you end up with. Um, they're just absolutely amazing sculpted figures. Just the armor detailing on both of these is just sublime to look at. And just the, the paint work that goes into these and just the price you pay. You know, I'm always comparing them to PNS. So pretty much now they're, I think they're competitors just for the high volume figures uh, that they're releasing versus, you know, PNS's paint jobs and, you know, the price and everything. Holland God Prix hasn't, hasn't beat on paint and prices. Uh, for their figures and these inventories are just absolutely fantastic and i just can't wait to see what else they have in store for us they're just cranking up figures every couple of weeks and just because they're so affordable uh i don't mind keeping up with them when pns was doing it poof that was a, a wallet beating that uh, i'm still <laughs> recovering from but yeah these things are awesome and i highly highly recommend them uh like i said the beginning of the review i'm gonna get mine off aliexpress i'll leave the link down below in the description you know for like 17 to 20 dollars you just really can't beat the price on these so that will do it for the review. Um, I'm moving sometime next week, so it might be a little slow with reviews. I'll try to crank out a bunch of things. I have a bunch of Jurassic World stuff I have to get to. Uh, I got PNSO's Alberta Saurus coming in. Lots of stuff is coming in the mail. So once I'm all settled in, I should be able to get back to regularly re releasing reviews a few times a week. So that will do it. As always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. Thanks greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.